If you're like me, the kitchen is probably one of the main hubs of your home, and because of this, it is the room that gets the cluttered, untidy, and just downright messy the quickest. So I'm constantly evolving my kitchen space to make it more simplified, because the more simplified my kitchen is, the more efficient it is. It allows me to maximize the space I have, have better workflow, and generally reduces my stress because I do just spend so much time in here. So if you want to know my tricks to keep my kitchen more simplified, keep on watching. Okay, let's start with the elephant in the room when it comes to kitchens, and that is the counters. Kitchen counters love to accumulate stuff. I'm constantly amazed at how quickly my kitchen counters can get full of just random stuff. Mail, kids jackets, food, cutting boards, packages, just stuff. And a really interesting thing I have learned about kitchen counters is that more of them doesn't mean you have less clutter. We actually renovated this kitchen that we have now last year, and prior to that we had about half as much counter space, maybe even less. And I remember thinking how amazing it would feel to have more counters, that it would be so much more spacious, but really it's just more counters to clutter. So don't fall into the trap of telling yourself that just if you had more counter space you would be less cluttered. You gotta work with what you've got. This is the kitchen you have and the counter space you have, so make it work for you. On a daily basis, I'm constantly removing things from my counters that don't belong. Typically, this is just putting stuff back where it goes. Put the pot back in the cupboard, the jacket back in the closet, the books back in my kids' room, the milk frother back in the drawer. Get into the habit of putting stuff back where it goes, even if you're going to use it again soon. I think we often leave stuff out on counters because we're going to need it again and we think we're saving ourselves time. Certainly, if you're in the act of cooking a meal and you're going to need that can opener again for that recipe, keep it out. But I'm talking about things you're not actively using in the moment. Here's an example. My kids get lunch packed for school, right? So every night I have to empty their lunch boxes and then fill them back up for tomorrow. It would be easy to just leave their lunch boxes out on the counters because I'm going to need them again tomorrow, right? But the truth is doing that is going to clutter up that space for the dinner time rush, for breakfast time. So I have hooks. They're right inside the basement door, right off the kitchen where they hang. I keep them close to the kitchen area, but it gets the lunch boxes up and off the counter and frees up that space. Another example, I might get some hate for this one, but that's kitchen appliances. The only kitchen appliance I leave out on our counter is our toaster oven. Everything else lives in a cupboard, even if it's something we use daily, because I truly find that the 15 seconds it takes to put it back in the cupboard is worth having that space cleared off on the counter. It makes it feel less busy, makes it easier to clean and wipe down, and gives me uh, more room to just cook and to use. It's a very small time commitment for a good value trade-off, in my opinion. Opinion. I find that being ruthless about my counter space is very helpful. Whenever my kitchen feels messy or untidy, the first thing I do is a quick sweep of the space, clearing off the counters, putting things back where they go. And when I notice a repeat offender, something that is constantly getting left out on my counters, I ask myself, what is it about this item that makes it so it keeps getting left out? Does it not have a dedicated home it belongs? Is the home where it does belong not easy enough to get to? Like, what isn't working here? All right, next let's chat about small kitchen kitchen appliances and tools a little bit more. There are a lot of gadgets and tools available for the kitchen, all designed to make our lives easier and make cooking faster. And I'm not against them. I have some trusty kitchen gadgets that I absolutely love, but it's important not to let them overtake your kitchen to the point of overwhelm. Be diligent about taking an audit of the gadgets and appliances you have. Are there any that haven't been touched in three months, six months, a year, any that get used very rarely, any that you want to use but you don't use because they're just too bulky or time consuming. There are a few options when it comes to auditing our kitchen appliances and gadgets. Obviously the first is to let go of anything gimmicky you bought thinking you definitely use and never did. It's fine. Water under the bridge. Let it go. For the appliances and gadgets that you aren't ready to let go of but maybe you don't use all that much, can they get stored somewhere else? For example, I have a huge roasting pan that I literally use at Thanksgiving and sometimes at Christmas, but I do host Christmas and Thanksgiving every year, so I really do need this roasting pan. But I don't need it in my main kitchen space. I don't use it 11 months out of the year. Hogging up valuable cupboard area, making it harder for me to get to the pots and pans I use every day. So I store this in our basement. I actually have a little shelf in our basement for overflow kitchen stuff like this. For our pitchers, I only use when we have company and other gadgets and kitchen tools that I do know that I'll need and I'll want to use, but I don't really use on a weekly or monthly basis. I put them in this overflow spot. So they're not taking up main uh, kitchen real estate, but they're still available if I need them. Okay, great. Now you've got some of the counters that are more cleared off. Maybe you've purged some of your gadgets that you didn't need. 
what else can we do to simplify our kitchen? I suggest remove excess packaging. This is called decanting. I'm sure you've seen images of beautifully decanted pantries and kitchens all over the internet at this point, and while they sure do look pretty, I'm here as a testament that they do keep your kitchen a lot more streamlined and simplified. So this is basically just the process of trying to remove packaging from your kitchen where and whenever possible. Namely, it ends up being in your pantry, but also under your kitchen sink and maybe for plastic wraps, snack drawers, that sort of stuff. Here's the thing I have found with decanting. One, it does just look nicer, which obviously isn't a game changer, but there is a direct link between order and calm, and it's been proven that untidy and or unorganized places lead us to lower productivity and procrastination. So simply by having your space look and feel more organized, it does make a difference. And again, going back to having less on counters. Two, it makes it a lot more efficient in my cooking. It's a lot easier for me to grab the few canisters of food that I need to cook than having to juggle all the boxes and bags they typically come in, which never sit up straight, they rip, they tear, they fall apart, they don't stack well. And having items in like canisters makes it easier to store them because they are streamlined, same size, same shape, as opposed to trying to shove bags of rice next to smushed boxes of pasta. And finally, it helps me keep a better eye on what I have and what I need. I tend not to overbuy or underbuy as much because I always have a better idea of what's in stock. I don't end up with five boxes of pasta and three different kinds of rice and two open bags of flour. I always have a better grip on what I have and what I need. Next, remember the purpose of this room. I started off this video talking about how the kitchen is the hub of the house. And because of that, lots of times more than just cooking makes its way into this space. You're doing your kids' arts and crafts on the kitchen island, you're opening mail on the counter, you're working on a project, you're setting up tools for a small home improvement project, and so on. And so it's easy for drawers and cabinets to end up holding on to stuff that doesn't necessarily make sense in a kitchen, which is ultimately the purpose of our kitchen is to cook. Now there are some exceptions here, it may make sense to have some space in your kitchen for additional stuff. For example, I keep my daughter's hair stuff in the kitchen because she's two years old and the only way I can do her hair in the morning is when she's distracted having her breakfast. But just be aware of things that have found their way coming into the kitchen and living there that don't really need to live there. I always think about the space in my kitchen as valuable real estate. If it's not actively being used on a weekly basis in this space, does it need to be living here? Is this where it belongs? Okay, lastly, I want to share just a few products I love for keeping my kitchen more simplified. First up is drawer dividers. I love how these create compartments inside of drawers. I first started using these in dressers for mine and my kids stuff, really fell in love with it, but now I love using them in my kitchen to create better systems for organizing stuff there as well. Next up is Lazy Susans. I used to think that these were space wasters since it is a round item in a square cupboard, but I actually find it makes for a much more effective use of space since you can easily see and grab everything. I love it for my oils, vinegars, and non-refrigerated sauces. Next up, my decanted spices. And I get hate on these every time I share them, but I don't care because I love them and it makes me happy. It takes a small amount of time to manage and it keeps my spices so much more organized and easy to find. I used to always end up with like three bottles of the same thing, not anymore. Now my best tip is to keep an overstock bin with your spices with extra bottles and overflow spices. And on that note, I love these clear bins. They're amazing for kitchen storing. I store all my overstock type items in them, whether I bought like extra ketchup or condiments. It's just an easy place to have them and especially for shelves that are up really high, it's easy to be able to just pull down the whole bin to see the sauces in inside instead of trying to figure out like what's up there and behind the other bottles. I also have the divided versions of these kind of bins, which are amazing for storing my food storage. I had never thought to use bins for food storage, but it's such a simple, practical solution. I keep the tops and bottoms right together and file store them to make it super easy to grab them whenever I need one. And lastly, I always get questions about these, these divided bins that have little wheels on the bottom. So you can essentially just kind of create a drawer where there was just a shelf. I use these a lot on my down low cabinets to store my kids' stuff. I can easily pull it out, grab what I need, and then slide them back in. All right, my friends, that does it. That's some of my best tips and tricks for keeping a more simplified kitchen. Again, this is really the hub of a home for so many people. And these are just little tweaks and, and tips that I use to help keep this space that constantly gets cluttered and overwhelmed on its own, more simplified and makes it easier for me to simplify it at the end of the day or when I'm doing lunchtime pickup or whatever. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to yourself and to others, and I will see you all in my next video.